Since the start of the pandemic, they have been among the biggest cost drivers behind the increase in local property taxes. In fact, last year alone, 99.7% of Pennsylvania's charter enrollment growth was at virtual charter schools, which means that cybers are accountable for virtually all the charter-related cost increases. Last year, taxpayers spent nearly $1 billion on cyber charter schools. That's double the total from just five years ago. And estimates put that total at $1.7 billion by 2025. So what I asked my office to do is to put it in common sense terms. And in this economy that we all know prices are rising, this is what some of the savings would be if we were able to move this forward. On an average house assessed at $300,000, in Perky Oman School District, there would be about a $300 a, a year savings. In Springford School District, roughly another $300. In Potts Grove, $200. And in Potts Town, get a load of this one. In Potts Town, if we fund education, if we reform the charters, and this does not include putting money into PEASERS, it is almost $7,000 on a $300,000 house will be saved for the taxpayers. $7,000. And when we're sitting on billions of dollars as a commonwealth right now, the moment is now to give the money back to our taxpayers who are suffering. The moment is now to work with our school boards to make sure we can lower property taxes. Let me reiterate that. Lower property taxes. It's a little loud. Um, <laughs> lower property taxes. When is the moment that we look out to make sure our kids have what they need? And not only that, that we look at the way that we handle our charter schools and say, all we're looking to do is make it the same as it is for public schools, that we often hear about it is a public school. We're looking for representation on their boards. We're looking for accountability with the money that you have. We're looking for the way that you spend your special ed funds. That's all we're doing. We're not looking to close the charter schools or the cybers. We're looking for accountability. Accountability for every one of our Pennsylvanians, almost a 13 million of them, to know that we have been responsible with the way we've spent the taxpayer dollars. Their students aren't graduating at the rates that a brick and mortar school is producing. And why is that? Because we don't know what's going on in their board meetings. Those are not publicly elected school boards on the cyber charter schools. Their meetings are held in private, but yet they're spending taxpayer dollars. Cyber charter schools are public schools that are funded by tax revenue, but yet we have no accountability and no transparency. Educational standards and milestones are not publicly accessible. They need to be handled in the same way a brick and mortar public school is handled. Everything open, everything transparent, and everything above board. And for those cyber charter schools that are not performing, time for you to go from Pennsylvania. Our students demand that, our parents demand that, and our taxpayers demand a higher educational standard for every student regardless of where they get their education, online, charter, or public. Every student has potential. Not every student has an opportunity. We need to change that. And we need to hold the cyber charter community accountable for what they're doing and what they're not doing. And if they're not doing it, they need to go to another state. There was mention of the increases in costs over the years. We have realized a 50% increase since 2015 in what we contribute to charter school students for their tuition. It also is based upon those tuition costs for students across the Commonwealth where they attend and the wealth of their district. So bringing some standardization or consistency to charter school tuition, I believe will also create a more fair system. I'm advocating for that fairness all the way around um, because taxpayers, as has been mentioned as well, support these schools as well as ours. Our goal is to make sure that our future generations are better than the previous generations, and we're not currently doing that, but because of the legislators, the, the legislators that stand behind me, we now have that opportunity. So I, I, I urge our Speaker of the House, I urge our Governor, and I urge our Senate and House representatives to do what's needed not to do what's politically best, but to do what's needed for our students. And one of the things that really was glaringly obvious for doing right by our taxpayers and in consequence to that doing right by our students is the opportunity that charter school reform presents here in Pennsylvania. 
Uh, this is an issue that should have bipartisan consensus across the Commonwealth. Uh, simply put, there should be no constituent, constituency for a status quo that protects a system that we know is allocating funds in a way that is inappropriate, inequitable, and, cr and frankly, it opens the door for the worst types of abuses of taxpayer money. One of the things that uh, I realize is charter school reform is often viewed maybe as a as an urban issue, or maybe it's your issue, not mine. Well, here's the reality. Look at this cross-section of school districts, not just across Montgomery County, but southeastern Pennsylvania, and frankly, across this great commonwealth. The need is obvious. The willingness of superintendents, not the most political uh, types to begin with, to stand up and say, this is wrong, this is unconscionable, this is taking dollars out of our students' best interests, and it is wrong to taxpayers. Cyber charters, the cyber part, are so overfunded right now that they can spend millions of taxpayer dollars on advertising. And in fact, they have to you know, have one of those secret board meetings to figure out how are they going to you know, uh, sort of clear the books? How are they going to use this money? And they've come up with novel ways of, of sort of paying money back to their students. So taxpayer dollars that go into a system are then being forwarded uh, you know, through the cyber charter and through some of their management companies uh, to create personal wealth in a lot of different ways with our money. And that shouldn't be happening. Uh, especially after two years of COVID, where our school systems, our public school directors, we know exactly how much it costs to provide virtual online curriculum. Because before I was elected to the state house, I was a tax collector. And my job, and perhaps one of the highest, and in fact it is I think the 10th highest property tax community in the state, is to ensure that I can look our seniors in the eye who are worried that they're not going to be able to live their last days in the homes that has been in their family for generations because they see property taxes continuing to go up because our system is not accountable, our system is not fairly and equitably funded, and the one profitable institution that's involved in our public education system seems to have the highest rate of growth and is taking out more and more the larger portion of their checks that continues to go up. I don't know how I'm supposed to look those seniors in their face. The most urgent priority that we're hearing about today and before the 22-23 state budget development cycle closes is cyber charter reform. Running a cyber charter school is an incredible business model. It is a wonderful business model. I've watched it when, when I was acting Secretary of Education. It was making, it has made billions of dollars for the, the entrepreneurs who run it. But versus a high quality and accountable education, it, education model, it is not. It's a cash cow and wasteful spending of hard earned taxpayers' dollars. Specifically, the variability we, you've heard already today of payments across all 500 school districts in Pennsylvania that range from about $8,900 to $22,000 per regular ed student depending upon the district they come from. The variability in, in tuition rates is nonsensical and bears no relation to actual costs. As an example, for comparison, it costs Quakertown no more than $5,000 total dollars, total cost of ownership of educating a student online. But today is an attack on a law that is broken and the long overdue reform needed for charter schools to be funded on the basis of their real costs and not some skewed formulas that have resulted in dr drastic overpayments from school districts that have little to no oversight in how those taxpayer dollars are being spent. In Norristown, we've been forced to raise taxes at or above our Act 1 index 10 times in the past 12 years totaling a staggering 33% increase in property taxes in a little over a decade. Under the current charter school law, we'll pay over $10 million next year in just charter school payments, or more accurately, in overpayments, the way that cyber tuition and special education funding is currently set. These overpayments take funding away from our students 
and force us to continue to impose a crushing tax burden on our community. If we were able to standardize tuition, Upper Dublin would see cost, and vo cost avoidance of a half a million dollars. So what does that mean? That means more supports for our students that come to school every single day. That means supports that will help our kids be successful in their classrooms. Supports for teachers, supports for professional learning, supports to make our district the best it can be. We don't have millions of dollars to spend to uh, advertise our schools as the cyber charter schools do, but we do have a lot of accountability. And we want, and more importantly, we demand the same level of accountability for all of the cyber schools, the same accountability that we have as traditional public schools. There's a straight line from overpayments to cyber charters and overpayments for special education to all charters. There's a straight line from those overpayments to property tax increases. School districts are struggling across the state to keep up with growing charter costs and are forced to raise taxes and cut staffing and programs. These 433 school boards are not calling for the elimination of charter schools. Rather, they are calling on the General Assembly to meaningfully, re meaningfully revise the existing flawed charter school funding system. Because of the way that $3 million figure is arrived at. It's arrived at without any input as to the costs of what cyber education is. That's unfair to me, it's unfair to, my vo to the voters who elected me, and it's unfair to the kids who are in school, whose education, funds are being diverted from that education to pay a bill that I can't explain. We've seen over a 50% increase in about the same time frame. Our response to that has been threefold. Raise taxes, cut programs, cut staff. So we've seen more dollars go out. Uh, those schools have enriched themselves. You've heard about the increases of their fund balance. And my students in our center have less opportunities.